Look how God done bless you Wonder why I'm feeling extra Say what it do, what the business is Four runner, running over what the devil sin Shoes, pants, chest, shoulders Get up off me, don't get closer It ain't over, tell us over Game breaker, big joke It's a whole lot of flexing going on Feel like I could walk on water, lemon pepper, steppers on We was really down bad, told my mama not for long Held and thought they got another one, we know they got it wrong And another thing, hold up now Now we don't wrestle with flesh and blood I was out here wildin', ain't the same way that I was Tapping when I pray, I'm tapping like I know the blood Back up with the hate, respectfully, it's all in love Hairline check, fade check The only chains ain't broken is the ones that's on my neck The coldest with some boldness got me flowing with the vets It's all there, ain't no need to second guess mm -hmm. Yes What's up, family and friends? Welcome back to another edition of the Wrap Up Podcast, where we dive into the latest news, sports, and culture. I am your host, Lenny B. And I appreciate each and every one of you for tapping in with me. Big shout out to those that's hitting the like button, sharing the vibes, subscribing. Remember to put God first. Let's get to the wrap-up session. What's going on, my people? Happy Thursday. How y'all feeling out there? What's going on? Y'all good? How y'all feeling? Let me just add one little um, piece to the show real quick. I was, um, earlier today, I had some, um, I was playing basketball, uh, with my job, and I'm, I must say I was very, uh, I was very lebron S out there, I must say, you know, I was backing them down, shooting a couple threes, getting the teammates involved. Hey, I was I was I was MVP status, I must say. I ain't trying to brag, you know. Some you know, uh Sean hit me up, you know, earlier today and was asking, do I play basketball? And I was like, do I? What you trying to get crossed up or what? Let, let me know. What, you you sizing me up? Let me know. If I need to if I need to bring my shoes, you know what I'm saying? In North Carolina, I had to I had to make sure he wasn't, you know, because he's from New York. So, you know, in New York, ballers always feel like, you know, they the best. I was I was going to represent, though. If I, hey, back him down. I'm just saying, dog. I, I had, you know, I, I felt, you know, I say, Le, I, I say LeBron, but I felt more like, like Charles Barkley early in the days, you know what I'm saying? I, I had to rock, you know what I'm saying? I had to rock in my hands, scoop a couple of little sky hooks, you know, baseline drives. Showed them with the, I showed them the left. I showed them the left. So just know I was, uh, I was doing my thing out there, you know what I'm saying? It, no video. It is no video. You know, next time I have to, I have to throw some video out there because I, I can see a lot of haters in the, in the comments. But it's all good. I, I expect that. I expect haters. I expect them. Let me just. Uh, I forgot this one little piece for the, 
for the show. Uh, let me see where it's at. Y'all ready for Friday? Let me see. Where is it at? Where are you at? Let's see what y'all talking about. Tired but feeling good. Okay. Let's see. Where is it at? Um, let's see. Hold on. Bear with me real quick. Where is it at? Where is it at? I'm going to just say, just push it. I'm trying to find it. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, maybe it's in here. All right, I don't feel like finding it. All right, yeah, because I wanted to get it started. All right, so let's see who we got in here. Let's see who we got. Let's see. Teriyaki, what's up, bro? How you feeling? Good? Let's see. Book, book, what's up, man? Got Kathy in the building. Okay, okay, okay. What's up? <laughs> Got Keish. <laughs> Got my dog. <laughs> Rebot Rob. What up, what up? If you can on the way in, oh, 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 look at him, look at him, see, look, 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 see, look at him. What up, what up? <laughs> I'm gonna shine in the building. Hey, I'm always ready, man, I'm always ready. Uh, let's see. Okay, just getting out the gym, all right, that's what I'm talking about. All right, yeah, I ain't wasting no time. Let's get it going. Uh, throw the. Let me just make sure that this is good. On this side. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Throw this in. Pin it. All right, let's see what we're gonna what we're gonna start the show. Uh, well, I know we had some some news earlier this this morning when we woke up, so let's uh, let's go there first. Let me know if uh, the audio is good on the on the t on the video. Boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Las Vegas. It's the last known video of O.J. Simpson nine weeks before he's death from cancer, and typically it was filmed with falsehood. My health is good. I mean, obviously I'm dealing with some issues, uh, but hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be uh, back on that golf course hopefully in a couple of weeks. 
In fact, the 76-year-old disgraced legend was losing his battle with prostate cancer. He scoffed at reports he was in hospice care. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospice. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald say, can't trust the media. The first word that he had died came in a statement from his family today. Our father, Orange Hall James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and his grandchildren. Sad to say, it's not unusual at all. There's 200,000 men a year with prostate cancer diagnosed. 40,000 die of prostate cancer every year. And it's a very fatal disease. Simpson's sensational trial for the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole, and her friend, Ron Goldman, took place 29 years ago. Even so, it was top news of the day today as networks broke into programming to announce his death. We have just learned this morning that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. Simpson's life story is extraordinary. The view was about to come on the air when the word of his death came down. O.J. Simpson has passed away at age 76. O.J. He was uh, battling cancer, and uh, he's passed. So I spoke with Alan Dur. Yeah, so what up, bro? How you feeling, man? Good, bro. R.I.P. to O.J., man. Hey, R.I.P. to O.J., yeah, so today, and you kind of saw, like, how, you know, s certain parts of the media kind of, you know, already was, you know, trying to do his name in, so, yeah. They but, had to do, they did it again. They ran it back. They did the same thing uh, in 94. I remember uh, my mom, right, she's a, she's a teacher, and she was saying that she had a free period that time, and she was just saying how, when um, the black teachers at the school versus the white teachers at the school, when they right. read the verdict. Yeah. And it was just like, when the white teachers, when they read the verdict, the not guilty verdict, they just, oh, man. And then the black teachers was like, yes! Right. Yes! You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, it was like rejoicing because OJ was a transcendent person in the black community, bro. Like, he just... I love OJ, bro. Like I've only ever known like OJ to, to be like a, 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 I mean, not only he's he's more infamous than he is famous. Let's be real. Yeah. But like, yeah. you know, OJ, not for them, for the older generation. OJ was that dude, bro. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, he he had a a real big part in. Um, it is what it is podcast you know the, yes he did so one of my favorites it, it, yeah. it'd definitely be a different um you know vibe with them i'm pretty sure I, i'm looking forward to seeing you know uh their tribute to him as well so right yeah shouts uh, out to Cam and Mace. Pause. say it one more time shouts out to cam, cam and mace pause send us some, pause. some merch cam, cam and mace <laughs> yeah um yeah, let me just make sure we good. Okay, yep. Um, okay, yeah, man. Yeah, shout out to OJ. You know, he, he definitely, you know, you, we you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to talk down on it. And, and it's wild to see media, how they, you know, portray certain things and how they are talked down on. It's, it's, it's not, not wild. It's, it's the way, the way it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a divisive thing. Bro, if you look at everything, bro, in life, this is so crazy. We've talked about this plenty of times before. Everything that's out here that consumers, that's a consumable product or anything, is designed to div to, to divide us. Think about Apple versus iPhone. I hate seeing green text on my phone. You know what I'm saying? It's just another. It's just another phone. Like that's not their problem. You know what I mean? But I hate seeing green text on my phone. So Apple, Android. I don't, I hate playing with, with, uh, with PlayStation users. I'm an Xbox guy. Like, you know, it's always vegan versus, you know, meat eaters, pause. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's always, everything is so divisive and stuff like that. Chevy and Ford, like it's, it's everything, bro. So they do, they catch little waves like this, like, oh yeah, did you see OJ die? And it's like, what am I supposed to say to that? You know? Mm-hmm. You know, because I feel like you're saying it because you're you're weaponizing it almost. You, you know? Yeah, you're trying to you're trying to see what type of reaction I have of it. Yeah, for right. sure. They asked me at work today. They were just like, "Hey, Rob, did you hear that OJ died?" And I was like, "Why would you ask me that?" Right. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So. Hey, uh, so do you eat at uh, Chipotle? I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. Okay. I have some, yeah. So you 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 uh you go in you know uh, you know every once in a while or so right? Yeah, I'll hit the, hit them with the uh, white rice, hold the beans, yeah. uh, double chicken. How yeah. about uh, do you do you get any extras like um, like guacamole or anything like that? I've never been a fan of guacamole. No, okay. I, 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 I guacamole. My extra would be um, uh, queso. Okay. All right, all right. So let's um so so when you ask, you when you ask for extras, do do you feel like you, you get uh short change sometimes? You do. They say there's a trick to it. So okay. you let them the the, the, the the life hack is is you let them do you don't say double meat pause out the gate. Yeah. So you, you let him load it on to your thing, right? So you're assuming so you're ordering for me. And I'm like, how, how you doing? And then you like, all right, chicken. So I scoop you out of chicken. And then you say, I'm gonna make that a double. Because now, right, if I go in for the two scoops, I'm gonna automatically off the cuff scoop. Uh, short, uh, short you a little bit. Scoop. Right. Yeah. You know but the mean? hack, so so that's a hack. But the hack would never be to uh, shoot someone if they didn't give you enough, right? Nah. Okay. Just 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 making sure. So let's uh let's check this story out. Hey y'all, let me know if the uh sound is is good. The last sip of OJ is wild. <laughs> arrested after he allegedly shot a restaurant employee because he was angry about guacamole. The reason that this happened is because of poor decisions, inability to control emotions, and that's what led to the shooting. It happened Friday night at the Chipotle on Evergreen in Southfield. This happened right across the street from the police station. So what's the nerve of that? And you think you're going to get away with it? 32-year-old Aaron Michael Brown arrested a short distance away. At a press conference on Monday, a timeline. The suspect, Mr. Aaron Brown, entered the Chipotle restaurant with his wife. While standing at the register, Mr. Brown asked for extra guacamole on his food that he had just purchased. Police say he was upset because it wasn't enough guacamole. Mr. Brown then called the female Chipotle employee a derogatory name, the B word, which upset her understandably. Fellow employees took her to the back to try to calm her down, leaving the front counter unattended. Our suspect, Mr. Brown, uh, who previously had paid for his food items, uh, began to proceed to go around the counter and began to bag his own items, and then he took a cup and filled it with guacamole. Oh a 21-year-old male employee tried to stop him. <laughs> oh, physical altercation and then brown a licensed cpl holder with no prior criminal history allegedly shoots the employee in the leg then takes his food and calmly walks out i was in my car and i saw him just walk out to his car close the door and just drive off like he didn't he didn't speed off or anything it was it was weird to see but it was like you think you want to get out of there fast <laughs> bro I don't think it's ever that serious, man. But the crazy thing is he went in there with his wife. It's just like, <sighs> where, where was imagine, she in this? Imagine, imagine getting, getting shorted, shorted on, on your, your guac, guac. And now, now I'm, I'm pulling, pulling out a out Glock. Lock. <laughs> Up, Up in the, in the pole, pole over Chipotle, Chipotle is, is absolutely, absolutely insane, insane, bro. bro. Pulling, pulling out, out the blower, blower for, for extra walk. Did you see how he went back there and said, "Oh, you know what? I got it. I work, I work here, here now. now. <laughs> I work, I work here, now. here now. Yo, guacamole, guacamole. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you know what else is so? so you know what else is wild, wild bro? bro? There's, There's never, never been, a been a time, time in my, in my life, life, right? Like, like when, when we, we were, were at fast food, food when we were kids, right. if, if someone, someone came, came behind, behind that, that counter, counter, bro, yeah. they, can they can do whatever they want. want. Hey, you got it. Life. You you got it. Bro, bro have bro, a but take whatever you hear. Some more stuff already ready. You want this too? Like, bro, I'm not 
Why am I stopping him? Yeah. Fam, there's cameras everywhere, bro. You're. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's wild, bro. That and is, now that, that person's, that person's gonna, gonna lose their, their job at Chipotle, Chipotle because, they because they got a miss work because they got popped in the leg. leg. It's yeah, never that, that serious, serious on either, either end, end, right? right? So, so it's, it's never, never serious, serious enough, enough to up to up the poll on a Chipotle worker, and it's never that serious to be like, nah, stop, like, nah, hell, take it, take it, bro, take it. Yeah, yeah, that's wild, man. Um. But yeah, speaking of um, you know food service and and food, let's uh, let's check what's going on in the um, the migrant shelters. Tonight, some migrants say they are not getting the proper food at their shelters as Ramadan comes to a close. CBS 2's Ali Bauman tells us the city, the city says it's all a big misunderstanding. Amadou Barry came to New York from Guinea in West Africa three months ago. He's one of the 3,000 asylum seekers at the Randalls Island Humanitarian Center, breaking fast in the shelter's cafeteria. Sometimes good food, sometimes no, no good food. Tonight, he says the food is good. It's Eid al-Fitr, celebrating the end of the month of Ramadan. More than half of the migrants here are Muslim. We've made sure that all the food is halal to make sure that everybody, again, feels uh -huh. welcome. But during Ramadan, some migrants disputed that. At the Creedmoor shelter in Queens, volunteers claimed the only halal meals served were vegetarian. It's a political answer. You can say... Technically, yes, they are getting halal meals because half of the meals are vegetables. So vegetable, all vegetables are halal. Throughout the month, Kabir Javad and his Majid cooked and served hundreds of their own meals for migrants right outside the shelter. People can't take it anymore. They're like, wow, we fasted the entire day and it's the same exact garbage. The city spends about $14 a day on meals per person, which adds up to about $350,000 a day at all of its congregate shelters like this one on Randall's Island. So if migrants don't know the cafeteria meat is halal, that's an expensive misunderstanding. What what can the city be doing to make sure people know the options available to them? Yeah, we will help you and make sure that everybody knows. We've worked incredibly hard uh, at our humanitarian centers to make people feel welcome through the food that we're offering them. During Ramadan, the city also tried to make migrants feel welcome with weekly prayer services at the Randalls Island Shelter. New York said whatever cultural and religious and social background that you come from, we'll protect it and we'll celebrate it. The city... Yeah, so that that uh, you know, last last uh, last month we was talking about Chicago, yeah, and, and now we're talking about New York migrants not getting you know proper meals that they that they um, that they think is um, you know culturally appropriated. It's just it's sad, sad, bro. It's, it's just sad, sad because, because um, it's really it's sad, sad, bro, because. Here's the thing. If I come to your house, right, uninvited, and you just like, man, well, shit, you here. I got to feed you, right? And then I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't eat waffles. The good thing about this plate is, is you don't have to eat it. You can go back to where you came from. I didn't want you here. But you're here, and it's, and, 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 and it's immoral for me not to feed you. So I'm going to feed you what my family, my family eats waffles in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I cannot do pancakes. I'm not doing pancakes. You know? Yeah. That's crazy, bro. Um, Yeah. The, the only thing I would say is, you know, to the situation is just like they was offering vegetarian meals, you know, that, you know, obviously is considered halal. And it's just like, hey, man, like. Allah. What do you want us to do at that point? Like we're we're actually it's not like we're giving you a, a you know a bowl of cereal and saying like hey just just going about your day like at least it was you know a vegetarian meal you know so it would be it's, it would always be something to to complain about and then they got the dude who. Who's an American citizen? He was just like, yeah, yeah they're, they're feeding them the same old garbage. You know what? We'll open up your pockets, bro, and, and like ante up. They spending three hundred thirty racks a day feeding these people, bro. Yeah, yeah. 
Three hundred racks, man, and that's just that's just one shelter. That's, that's just, just one, one shelter. shelter. Hey, listen, listen man, man, it's, it's enough, enough. It's enough, enough funds, funds around, around, around here, here where everybody, everybody could be straight, straight but, but they're, they're all, all being, being misallocated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I want to wait for that one. That one's kind of tough. I'm a. <laughs> Yeah, that one. That one's tough. Let's um. <laughs> tough, tough, tough topic, topic bro. bro. I, it's it's just it's just one of those heartfelt ones. So I'm a, I'm gonna do it after. Um, don't, don't make me make cry, cry in this in this thing, thing bro. Because no, women but, hate God cries. Cry, yeah. <laughs> 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 hey. Let's go here. debate discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes biological males in women's sports i was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue um damn you got deep on me then getting, getting deep, deep on me, on me is crazy I, I i'm on the i mean i'm on the the opinion of of If you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Jesus. Do you think uh, transgender women should be able to participate? That, that, that's your question you want me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it... And when it yeah, so that was done, and um, she definitely got shot put it on that one. He, he, he yeah. definitely pulled that one. Um What's your thoughts? Do you feel like she felt that way, um, you know, as an individual? Or do do you think it was because she was representing the, uh, the university and it, it it wasn't just about herself? She's most definitely been PR trained. Yeah. Um, and then when they cornered her, I really didn't like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, like when you're being interviewed like that, right, and you... You get asked a tough question, then you answer, and you're like, "Who? We, we we got that. We got out of that without being clipped." And then they're like, "Nah, you know what I want from you. You know what I want from you. So go ahead and give it to me." Yeah. I don't know how Don feels, but I know how I feel about transgender in sports. Right? It's just gonna be. We're just gonna have to see, man. Someone gonna have to get hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Until hurt or or badly maimed or injured before they're like, you know what? This don't, this don't make no, no sense, sense, bro. Like, this don't, don't make, make no, no sense. sense. You know, like, we need to get... This shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening. You know what I mean? Right. I always go back to the to the doctor's recommended cigarettes at one point in time. Like, it's going to change, like, but it ain't going to be... No, you or I aren't going to be able to... Our, our voice ain't going to be able to change it. It's going to be like these. That's going to change it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's going to be like that. Also, yeah. Yeah. Right, because it's just like what happens when a you know a a six one male that's maybe not physically opposing on the on the men's game, but we all know that a six one male uh six one you know basketball player on the women's side is most likely playing center, and he's mm-hmm. just down there banging, getting all the rebounds. Scoring thirty, like you, you, we just saw what, um, you know, somebody, you know, uh, like the bigger athletes, right, in 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 the um, in the women's sports, you know, the Candace Parkers, the the Reeses, you know, 
uh, even Griner and stuff like that. When when you have a big body female down there, they yeah. really do take over the game if they have some take skills. Over. Yeah. So so just imagine what that looks like if we have a a male, a, a biological male. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's just a different um. It's a different level of strength. Like we literally are built different, bro. Like it's, it wouldn't be fair, but the world needs to see it, bro. The world needs to see that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sorry. The world got to see it because they don't believe in sex until something happened. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like something got to happen. They did it with the, so it started on the lowest level with the Leah Thomas dude. Or Leah, yeah. Pardon me. Leah, with Leah Thomas. So that was a male, a male transition in a female, we ranked 547th in the country, right? So right. 546 people better. Now it's the number one female swimmer. Bro, do you know, do you know that she was out of the pool, drying off, and they were still in there swimming for second place? That's crazy. <laughs> right. We're right. calling her Johnny Gill. <laughs> yeah, it's. And it's just like, I mean, imagine having one that could just cross up and just raise just, up on you. Come on, man. What are we doing? So I I don't really know her personal thoughts on it. Um, maybe she maybe she does feel like, you know, hey, if if you consider yourself a, a, a female, then you should be able to play, you know, women's sports. But. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she really believes that. It just has to get so stinking before the trash gets taken. And I hate that. that. But that's how America is. It has to get so smelly and stinking and nasty before somebody's like, yo, we got to take this trash out. We can't do this no more. That's why I say it got to happen. You know what I'm saying? They need to see all of the WNBA records shattered. Shattered by a, a by, by a biologically born male, right? If if Caitlin Clark is doing what she's doing, imagine, because it's just like if if we're speaking on it from like uh you know the swimmer, you mm -hmm. know being ranked five hundred in men and then automatically becoming you know I'm the winning, top dog here. Yeah, I'm the top dog. Imagine what that looks like on the basketball court. Imagine Caitlin Clark having someone. Caitlin Clark is six foot one. Imagine her going up against a six foot three wing defender, and he's just and he's just ninety four feet on her. You know what I'm saying? It it almost looked like me out there this morning when I was playing. Hey, your boy was. Get, on, bro. get, it, get it. yeah, get it off, bro. Tell whatever lie you want, bro. You you don't throw him too, then you. <laughs> Hey, I ain't the one to tell a lie. <laughs> so I just ain't going to tell it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let, let's, let's, um, you, you know, like wa watching this story right here and, and kind of, um, you know, we've been talking about how you need to stay prepared and, and, and how, you know, uh, times like this, you need to be strapped up, uh, mm -hmm. And, and be ready. And you you like I, I would say there's no safe place anymore. That's very true. You know, whether that's at your home, you know, you got home evasions, you know, whether that's going to the grocery store. We saw we've been covering what goes on in a in a grocery store. Um going out to, you know, have a good time at a concert, but but it has happened before, but um, this story right here shows that churches are still not safe. Prosecutors say this is the suspect, 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio, posing in front of an ISIS flag. According to the criminal complaint, he allegedly told associates he had spent months formulating a plan to attack churches and kill parishioners in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. The FBI arresting him the day before they say he planned to carry it out. Mercurio allegedly wrote in a text message he would walk into a church, 
start beating people, and then kill them with his knives and machete, saying he would burn down the building. He said he would keep going until police killed him. That message allegedly sent last week to a confidential FBI informant. During his arrest, the FBI seizing knives, a machete, and butane. Intelligence officials have been warning about the risk that disaffected Americans could become lone wolf attackers, especially after the Hamas terror attack and ensuing war in Gaza. The FBI director just today. The ongoing war in the Middle East has raised the threat of an attack against Americans inside the United States to a whole nother level. The potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland is now increasingly concerning. Mercurio's alleged plot has echoes of the recent deadly ISIS-K attack on a Moscow concert hall. Court records describe Mercurio as a disillusioned teenager radicalized with ISIS propaganda during pandemic school lockdowns. A U.S. intelligence bulletin issued Friday warns of an elevated risk of ISIS-inspired attacks on sports stadiums, concert venues, and churches here in the U.S. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top... That's sad, That's sad, bro. I'm, I'm just, just glad, glad that they, they finally used their resources to prevent, prevent. You know what I mean? Right. Because, because a lot, a lot of time the FBI is on a break fix type of thing. thing. Like, oh, like, shoot, it happened now. We, we had the yeah, intel, intel, but we weren't able to pinpoint. Like, I'm happy they was able to do it, man. Like, right. That's the sick, man. That's some sick stuff. Yeah, man. And just and just knowing, like, when they say. Um, you know, planned attacks on churches, sporting events, and things like that. It's, it almost makes you feel like if I'm going to this event, I'm going to have something on me. And if I can't, I'm not going. <laughs> you know, like, it, it's it's to that point. Blickies and Bibles is crazy. Listen. Bro. Hey. This is where the world is at, though. Hey, I... I'm just saying. Yeah. Like if you in, hey, if you in there. Yeah. I'm strapped. I got I'm strapped. <laughs> like you said, I got my biggie in my Bible. <laughs> I'm ready. War ready. Like, hey, we hey, we're gonna read this word, but I, I promise you I'm gonna read somebody rights too. Like, <laughs> like, hey, we ain't just we ain't just reading verses. <laughs> My brother, that's, that's so crazy, crazy, bro. Like, like it's, 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 yeah, man, if I can't have my, if I can't have my joint with me, I'm not going to go. I'm sorry, because the world is just not in the right place right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's I, I, not in the right place right now. You, you cannot go anywhere, bro. And expect that it's a safe space, right? You know, blickies and Bibles. That's that's what I'm saying. Like I'm I'm telling you that that's a hey, trade. Put that on that. a t-shirt. Put yo underdog. Put that on a underdog. t-shirt. <laughs> Real talk, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you because I I, I know a lot of that is from you know, the reason why churches are are um kind of under attack and things like that is because they think we soft like we going in there like oh you know they they going in there for you know the word and nah mm -hmm. hey you you go to the right church yeah we need to have snipers on the uh on the balcony you know what i'm saying <laughs> just in case like it get if it get too active right and i'm like filled with the holy spirit so i'm not like in my right mind i need to have someone up on top right the guy the guy who's doing the filming of the service that's right. who need to be you know what i'm saying with the blick out there because what if it just take over me and i can't you know we got an active shooter in the building you know what i'm saying right so. yeah what's up hook hey man, what's happening to reebok rob what's up man chilling, big dog. Chilling, chilling, bro. What, hey, what you man, think about that man Hey man, you gotta protect yourself at all times, man. It's it's a crazy world that we live in, and you gotta kind of be prepared, man. Um, it's sad though if you think about it, though, man. When you feel like, man, I got to take the jammy with me to church, that's crazy, man. 
Oh, that's crazy. Just in case it jump off in church, I got to take the blicky with me to church. It's crazy, man. <laughs> Listen, you, ta- these the times that we live in, though, man. You might have to take the blicky with you to church, man. Ta- ta- I have to later- I had to lay the Bethlehem on the altar. Listen, to have a Bible in the left and the 22 in the right is a wild Sunday, bro. Bro, That's go- bro, bro. It goes even deeper. Your Sunday checklist. And you like, oh, oh babe, I almost forgot the thing. You know what Yo. I'm saying? That's That's you in church, you don't forgot the Jonah at home. You nervous the whole time in church. Can't even get your praise on. Can't get your praise on. Someone getting filled with the Holy Spirit, and you just, you know. <laughs> and see, that's that's what happens. Like you, you yeah. know, somebody catch the Holy Spirit and start, you know, running down you know, the. You know what it reminds you of? What's that? After nine eleven, how everybody was on flights after nine eleven. Right. Right. Well, if you jump up wrong, everybody on the everybody got to be on the hole. What are you doing? You can right, go to the right. bathroom that many times. What? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, put your shoes back on. What? You, what, what why <laughs> you leave? Why you leaving your shoes? Hey. <laughs> yeah, man. That that's. You know that's, what? Sir. TSA was making people just get naked. You know, just everything. Just get everything. We just gonna make sure you you're you're good to fly. Take everything off. Head to toe. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Like, yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a wild. Um, just just to know that, like, we are at attack, like for real. When 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 churches reach that level to where it's, it's like they spelled it out, like, yeah, we coming for the churches. <laughs> the pastors telling this whole. All of his whole staff, the bishops, the ushers, are, hey, look, man, we need to get our gun license. It's time to tighten up. It's time to tighten up. Armed ushers? Bro, RIP to Mrs. Hall, bro, the first usher that I can remember. And it was the sweetest lady, had the white gloves on. You know what I'm saying? She had mints all the time. She had the Mentos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Man, what a sweet lady, bro. But I can't imagine her being strapped. Yeah, you you almost have to like let let's say I had a I had a church right. I would have like a couple designated shooters. Yeah, yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> they got to sit up at the top, top man. man. Yo, just just like the ushers come with the plates and stuff like that. Hey, mm-hmm. try try usher if you want to. <laughs> hey, they gonna let it rain. We are gonna let freedom rain. <laughs> <laughs> we like freedom rain. What's we that go- sound? That's freedom. That's sound. <laughs> that is freedom. That is freedom. Freedom well, yeah. going off. Yeah, man. Let's. Uh, I want it, man. This, this one, man. This, this story is 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 pretty wild. When I was kind of like going over it and seeing, is man. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta kind of brace yourself on this one. This one is it's pretty wild. Let me just move you over a little bit. Pour this. Yeah, we we living in some wild times, man. We really are. That's why I have to have. I carry chamber. You know what I mean? Like most people don't carry chamber because of whatever reason, but mine is chambered at all times. Yeah. Let me just uh, do this. I'm from the ghetto, man. We was taught to keep one in the head. Man. Oh, no, we got, got, we got was taught to, to keep man. one in the head. You no got time to, to cock it, boy. No way to stop it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, Terry, I can say when your shooter is the deacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dog, I'm, really I'm really rebuking you. I'm really rebuking you, man. Jesus name. Yeah. Let me. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's look at this story right here. We 
are learning more tonight about the mother police say murdered her boyfriend in Woodland Hills <coughs> before pushing her baby and nine-year-old daughter into traffic on the 405 freeway. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah. I'm Carolyn Johnson. I'm Kathy Vara. We are learning more about the online personality of Danielle Johnson and how she was known by her more than 100,000 followers. Investigative reporter Eric Danielle. Blair joins us now live from our newsroom with details. Eric? Hi, Kathy and Carolyn. Well, we've confirmed that the mother, whose name was Danielle Johnson, was also known online as Danielle Oyaka. Through her website and social media, she sold astrology sessions and products online, and she made several posts before the deaths warning about the solar eclipse. A law enforcement source says they are confident these so social media posts show Danielle Johnson, who describes herself as an astrologer and a recording artist. Some of her posts on X, formerly Twitter, made proclamations about things that would happen to people who were born under various astrological signs. One post last week warned people not to look at Monday's solar eclipse, which happened hours after the killings and deaths in this case. Many other posts were anti-Semitic. Others spread false or unproven theories about COVID-19. The LAPD says detectives believe Johnson stabbed to death her 29-year-old live-in boyfriend, Jalen Cheney, inside the apartment the couple shared in Woodland Hills that happened early Monday morning. Then, police say she pushed her 9-year-old daughter into traffic while driving on the 405 freeway in Culver City before dawn while that girl was holding Johnson's 8-month-old daughter. The infant was hit by cars and killed. The nine-year-old was able to get over uh, to the shoulder. She right, survived. Right. Now, less than an hour later, police in Redondo Beach say Johnson was killed when her Porsche SUV struck several trees while traveling at more than 100 miles per hour. Now, detectives who've worked this case caution that even though they're eager to find some kind of an explanation for all of this violence, there is a chance it will never be understood. They say while Johnson's astrology-related posts and these eclipse references could reveal something about her mindset, without being able to interview her, there's just no way to know. Lastly, the nine-year-old girl who survived this ordeal is with the L.A. County Department of Children and Family Services. She has relatives here in California and out of state, and child welfare workers are looking to find the proper placement for her. Live in the newsroom, I'm investigative reporter Eric Leonard, NBC4 News. Back. People, People are, are losing, losing their minds, man. man. They losing it, bro. To like, make a post, say this, this is the final warning. It's. I I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can say like this is a every year thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know how much trauma that that nine year old is gonna have now? Like witnessing. Like that's what I was saying. That's the like. Yeah. That, that's dropping your sister to, to, to see like to see like a I mean she witnessed two deaths one stabbing yeah. and then getting thrown out in the highway with your you know baby you know uh what was it, baby yeah, sister but, yeah and then having and then getting twisted by traffic and dropping your dropping your sis, sibling and your sibling dying, and then you surviving, she's going to have survivors remorse her entire yeah. life. Like, Bro, and, and not only that, like, imagine the uh, the driver the person who hit him. Oh. that ran over the, the nine-month-old. Mm -mm -mm -mm. People that, are crazy, man. I don't know, Lenny. I, ain't, I, I don't, I don't even want to speak on that, man. People are crazy, man. Yeah. Hey, boy, do you, uh, I know you are, um, you know, goer at Chipotle. You, um, you rock with the gu guacamole? Guacamole. <laughs> guacamole? Nah, people are crazy, man. It ain't that deep, brother. Pay the extra dollar and some change to get you some guac, man. It's okay. Can you imagine being the, being the person behind him and be like, all right, all right, all right, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. I'll pay. <laughs> Like, I'll be, I'll be. see, that's what I'm saying. Like, if if I'm behind him, like, I'm like, hey, I just put that on my tab. Let's yeah, let's let's keep it going, man. Yeah, it's not that deep, bro. And if you the actual worker, man, I ain't blaming it on the workers because that's not their fault at all. But sometimes it's best to just get a sauce up, man. Like, yeah, when you go through the McDonald's and they're like, oh, we can only give you one. Get a sauce up, man. It ain't that deep, man. Get that man a scoop of guac and get him up out of there. He got something going on, man, in his brain. Right? Yeah.
He willing to die about this guac today. Come on, man. <laughs> he really did die about it. Imagine being the wife and having to get in the car with that psycho. <laughs> After. Yeah. Because she was like, she was like, yo, we are, are, are we going to talk about this or we talk about what? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Uh, just let me get my bowl. I'm going to eat my bowl at my house, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, drop me off at my mother's. <laughs> Yeah, drop me off at my mom's. I'm a, Cause I gotta. I'm, no, I'm saying, babe, I'm gonna come back. I just gotta get something from my mom's house. Damn. And you can have to walk off of my boat too if it ain't give you enough. As soon as you see your mom, as soon as you see your mom, call the police, call the police, call the police, please, 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 please. Yeah, man. Um. All right, so. Let, let's get let's get to this story right here. I, I want to hear y'all thoughts on it. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure y'all are aware of the the Dexter Reed shooting. Mm-mm. Well, yeah, well, yeah. This, this happened uh, this week, and let's 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 look at it, and then we can uh, rap about it afterwards. Roll the window down. What are you doing? Roll this one down. Roll that one down too. Hey, don't roll the window up. Don't roll the window up. Hey, okay. Do not roll the window up. Unlock the doors now. Unlock the doors now. Unlock the doors now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Hey. Hey. Oh, David. Shots fired. Shots fired. Hey. Hey. Shots fired. For the neighbors. For the neighbors. Ten one. Ten one. Lot of yeah, it's almost impossible to survive a police shooting because they empty it all. That's all one-way traffic. Hands! Hands! Hands. Hands. Wow! Hands. I'm dead! We need ambulance officers hit. We need ambulance officers hit. So, I got a question. I, I, I really I couldn't, couldn't tell, tell who bombed, who bombed first. first. I think yeah, the breath so started bombing, bombing first. first. I mean, so, so that's the thing, man. Uh, reports, it's only reports. They say, uh, "Oh boy, bomb first. So Dexter, can you can you, can can you blame, him? blame him? Yeah, yeah bro, bro. What are you talking talk about? about? You, what are you? I, I don't know. You getting about, pulled over? What, what you bombing, bombing for? for? You, you, no, you know, I'm saying, saying the traffic. No, no, you're, you're absolutely, absolutely right, right, bro. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the traffic stop and my doors stop, and I see your blick. Hey, hey, now it's now a shootout. Uh, nah, I, th- not I, saying I, think I would I handle, handle it like that. that but I'm I, think, I, think, I, think I think we misunderstand each other. I'm trying to figure out what would cause... Like, okay, so they said that the guy in the car shot at the police first, correct? Correct. Yeah, I think so. Come on, what do you expect to happen after you do that? After you make that... You, 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 right, you, right. What I'm saying is... is this situation, this situation could, could have been, been de-escalated, de-escalated because, because if, if I'm, I'm showing, showing you my, my pistol, pistol as a cop, cop right, right, and I'm and saying, all right, all right, all right, and then and it's then just it's like, like, all right, so she's going to shoot me, so I got a bomb, bomb first. first. Like, like, you know, I like, like, I don't know about that one, bro. I hey, mean, listen, I'm, I'm, got clearly, right, I'm, not, clearly I'm wrong, but what I'm saying is, like, I can understand him. As Americans, we got, we got, um, we got rights, right? And, and, and a lot of times, times we like to assert those, those rights, rights, especially with the police. With the police. I've, I've learned, learned in my time, time walking this earth, that it's better to just comply with them people and get out their way. If I'm dirty, if I'm dirty and I got the hammer, the little yield so that I'm gonna get in jail for carrying an illegal hammer is not worth my life, man. I look, I'm fucked up, I'm dirty. You caught me, hands up, I'm out the cop. You're right. I, yeah, I, 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 I am, am not, not arguing, arguing 
I'm not I'm arguing, arguing if he was right, right because, because he was, he was clearly, clearly he was wrong. wrong. You don't right. bomb on the top first, right? right? Because, because if you, if you listen, listen, you, you can't, can't do this do stuff as a, as a black, black man, man, all right? Let's just let's call it what it is, right? right? You can't yeah. do that, right? right. So instead so of her, instead of her using her baton and breaking the window and tasing and lighting, filling bro with 50 volts, right? She was just like, nah, he's got to die. So I guess bro was like, let me take some of them out. I'm just trying to understand his mindset. It was wrong, but. yeah. I, I, I think that was probably I don't want to go to jail. You yeah, know what I'm saying it ain't, it ain't like it ain't. See, it's a it's difference. Now I could see if he was unarmed and he was and he being disruptive and they, and they shot, shot him up a whole bunch of times. Time. Time. Like, wait, wait, he flicked off first. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and you and it's it's uh, I, I'm just looking at it objectively, right? And it. I I feel like the the cop pulled because he pulled. You know, um that from 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 how yeah, I looked on my on my side. Like it looked like cuz she was just trying to get the door open. It seemed like. Mm -hmm. So it it may it may listen. listen. From my, From my viewpoint, viewpoint, I agree I with Terry Yaki in the chat. He said the cop did escalate, escalate to the to use of deadly, deadly force, force, so he so just matched force, force with force, in my opinion. opinion. Was, was it the, the right, right thing, thing to do? To do? No, no, he paid for his life with it, and, and I don't advise any, any black, black man to do that. Black men are going to get shot by police following the law. Right? So don't break the law. Let me ask a question, though, Rob. What force was he responding to? What for her trying to yank the door? It ain't they like are, they I shot at him first. first. It ain't it like, like they hit him, hit him or, or right. they didn't do anything aggressive. He, he shot. shot. Okay. okay, I'm scared of him. They up on me. He shot. Run, 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 run it back run because, because I just I feel, feel like, like she, had, she, had, she upped the pole first. And it was, and she upped the pole first and they got mad because she got shot at. I don't know. You know what I mean? Hold on now. We ain't going to play them type of games. Like Police don't pull their guns out all the time now. No, no, police pull their guns up. Right. These are the These police. Are the so when the police are actually not trying to make no excuse for the police, but, but we, don't we don't take that as a super, super serious threat, threat when the police officers pull their gun up because that's the norm. You feel them? Oh, oh, officer, wait, man, my hands up. That's it. This nigga bust off. He did start dumping, bro. I hate to see it, bro. I hate to see it. You might, you, you, you're right. I mean, I'm. I just trying to put myself in his shoes, bro. And she escalated the deadly force, and he saw that flick, and he got triggered and started yanking on him. You know what I'm saying? So I don't advise any black man to pull. I was at work the other night, and I'm in the car with my coworker. We at work the other night, bro. The police came up behind him and said something was wrong with his tags. They asked him for his license. He told the police straight up and down, "I'm not reaching for my license because my gun is in the glove in my middle console with the license at." So I get out and let y'all get the license. Just so right. that we don't have no misunderstanding. That's called it's complying it's and being safe, safe man. man. Yeah. If they'd have shot right. the cop and hit me and him, now we got a different story because we specifically told y'all it's a hammer here. We trying to get out so that y'all can reach and do whatever y'all got to do in here. Right. We ain't bust off. <laughs> you know good. That's that's very good, man. Like that's very that's very smart too, and I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Cause he said, as soon as he'd have opened, he'd have opened that, that middle console, console and they'd have seen that handle, handle. it'd have been trouble. Yeah, it would have been trouble. It, it, it would, it would have My biggest off. fear, the biggest scariest thing to me in the world is hearing the police officer yell gun because they don't care. They not asking no questions. They dumping 46 rounds off and then while your body's shaking and spitting up blood, they telling you to put your hands up. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. No, you're right, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You gotta be gotta super be careful because this is the only place where they can get away with the free kill and spin the story and make it seem like you did something wrong. Cooperate with the people, man. Comply. Get out the car. Let them know what's going on and work your mojo. Do not sit there if you know you're child and you want some. If you know that you're super dirty and you in there messed up and you got something that's gonna scare them suckers because they mostly suckers. Right. Right. Comply with them people. You're going to put up a fight. You're going to get shot 46 times. Your family can't even see you. 
You can't even get a proper viewing at the joint because they'd have shot you all in your face. Come on. Right. No, you right. Yeah, let's let's uh let's finish. What's up, Sean? Let let me uh let me just finish this part. And, Big Sean. And uh, I, I and we can um then we can wrap afterwards. But I know Sean definitely uh can back up his comments that he had la- last week. Well, last episode. <laughs> Don't do that, L. <laughs> hey, I, I was just saying, man. Hold I on. Ain't gonna owe you. you know what, bro? Sean, I'm on your side, bro. So whatever you say, I'm going to try my best to spin it to what you meant it to say. You know what I'm saying? I got you, bro. All right, let's, yeah, let's, uh, I got you, bro. Let's finish this part right here. Okay. <laughs> Man, unlock what? the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Open. See that back pedal scares it. I don't know who shot that. I don't know if he shot first. I don't know who shot first, but I couldn't see. It's a lot of rounds. Big jumping, bro. That shit sound like Gaza over there, bro. What the? Yeah, I don't think it take that much to disarm a person or to, or to get a situation on the bro. He finna up the He reload. reload another. Why did you so you saw him get out of the car, right? With, With the, the hammer, hammer already. already. His hammer, hammer time. Jeez, man. So so, so, so apologize, apologize to me, to y'all. y'all. All, right. All right. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Do not roll the window. Pull the hands up. Unlock the doors now. Unlock the doors now. Hey, pause it right there, Lenny. See, look, that back backpedal, when they start backing up from the car with the hammer, that would have scared, scared me so much, I'd have probably pulled off. Oh, the back pedal is y'all prepping. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You did you hear? Did you hear him trying to tap them on the shoulder? So he was, he was gonna start dumping. from the viewpoint that we have right here. He got out and he was ready to drill something. And, and he was—he was, he didn't, didn't want to hit, hit his, his fellow officers, officers his, his fellow pigs, pig, fellow officers. And, and he was just like—he like, was, was tapping them, get out the way, get out the way. And, and he, was he was gonna start, start dumping off, off the rip. rip. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was done talking. I—I don't. I, but that, we can't really we we can't really say that because I I feel where you're coming from, but that's like being in his mind. Like you, we don't really know what he was gonna do. Very fair. It is for officers. That, that all, all I can do, do all I can do, and is I still look can't put my finger on who shot first. I still can't put my now. If the police shot first, Rob, I completely apologize to you. I was dead wrong. Yeah, but I can't put my finger on who shot first. Me, me either, bro. Me either. I, I feel like if I feel like if if he would have shot from the inside, I feel like the glass would have been busted. Though I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's 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 finish it. You're trying to pull off. It's too late now, bro. Man. 
Yeah. Come on, right, you hit, you hit him. Shot off the break. Look, Lim who camera we on. He shot already. He shot right now. Yeah. Start. Let, let me just. Uh, uh, the family had a press conference. Let's see what, what, what they had to say. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? He had just bought his new car three days before that, and he was just riding around in his car. He said, "Mom, boy, boy, ride," and they killed him. They killed him. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Dexter got out of his car, unarmed, and was shot by the police. Based on the COPA report that you all received this morning, 96 rounds were fired by these officers. We must also share with you that we did see in that video that Copa released um, a video of what appeared to be a gun laying in the seat of the car. Now, back out here live, you also are looking at police barricades that streets in Santa Cruz just dropped off and set up. We also know the police are standing by as within the next two hours or so, various active activist groups will arrive here outside of the 11th district um, to protest in favor of the this family calling for justice for the so so, so how, how did, did the officer, officer get shot if he was unarmed that's what i'm saying like, I, I, it's, it's confusing me I, I gotta i need to know the facts on this i need to know if they found a gun if his gun was fired all of the above before i could kind of formulate an opinion man yeah they're gonna get to the bottom of it yeah well, yeah i, I yeah, I mean, saying that they had the that he had the gun there, it's definitely gonna show that it, if it was fired or not. Um, it, You're gonna get to the bottom of it. It. What, what's up, Sean? What you got? Nah, man, I, I'm with. I, I'm I'm just kind of confused. I mean, I don't I don't have anything because I I need to know more. I mean, it seemed like. It seemed like he fired something, but I, I just, I don't understand. I mean, I just need more facts like Rob said. Right. It's going to it's gonna come out, they're going to get to the bottom of it, bro, because um, like 96 rounds off of, you know, like off of something you claim you've seen. I do think, like, I mean. I don't know, bro. I just want to. I just want to know the facts, man. I just want to know the facts. If it come out that the police accidentally shot their own officer, 
If it comes out that, that boy was on on officers, and then that gives a chain reaction. But that, to my first point, why are we escalating this to death? Why is this a routine traffic stop? And you coming over here with guns drawn? Like, I don't understand it. Like, it's I don't know. And it's like, I don't know, bro. Like, it's it's crazy to me. Like, I I mean I understand that. Like, you know, we're taught, you know, uh, deadly force, you know as a you know reserve like it's not offense but man it's to to go in a situation like that where the tent is up we do we do i mean that is chicago the situation could have been handled by better by everybody but i'm not gonna blame him for being in chicago and having tent on his car like it could have been handled better by everybody. Could did he have to whirl his window up? Absolutely not. Did they have to to point guns in his face before anything happened? Absolutely. Your gun shouldn't even be drawn. We will have a taser. Yeah. Why wouldn't you use your taser in that situation? You know what I mean? And it's like I just don't. Have you ever seen someone get hit with a taser, bro? They drop like a bag of bricks. Like yeah. you're incapacitated. So I'm like. While I understand where you're coming from, I can't jack that because I'm like, everyone should have handled that better, not just him. 100%. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I mean, I just, yeah, I I just feel that, you know, everybody responds to the taser is totally different, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, that's a fact. And as far as as like, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a cop, but I can only like look from the outside in and if I come up to a car a car and the windows is really tinted like that, I'm I'm fearful because I don't I can't see through it. So you can be pointing a gun at me right there on the spot. You know what I'm saying? So Well if you're that nervous to, then don't pull them over. No, it doesn't but, work like that. I'm pulling you over for a reason. Like why would I right. just let but you why, go? Hey, but see, every, <laughs> everything, every now I'm not taking this guy's side, but everything ain't a threat. Like tenant mm-hmm. windows are for privacy, right? For when you're driving, you don't want people on your car. If you're a police officer and this is your job, me having tenant windows shouldn't scare you. Or you need another job. You need to be getting that guacamole for cuz so this stuff don't happen at your Right. Right. But you I, I think you looking beyond what I'm saying. Like if I pull you over. I'm not pulling you over because of tent. You know what I'm saying? I'm pulling you over for whatever reason. And and I ask you to, to roll the window down. And you roll the window down. Then you're rolling it back up. I need you to roll the window back down because I can't see you through the tent. I understand the tent is privacy. But, you know, like, just to, just to be safe, like, I, I need to see your hands i need to see because everybody's not sane so you might be the crazy one i'm pulling over so i want to make sure i'm protecting myself so yo to be totally honest with you i would have pulled out too i would have pulled out the 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 blink like i would have did that too just to make sure because he might have a a a a a hand up you know in front of me because i don't i can't see so, you know, I, I don't know, man. I'm not a cop, but I'm just saying, like, we got to look at it from both sides. And if mm-hmm. he if he shot first and if it's a gun in the car, then case closed, suitcase filled with clothes. It doesn't matter if they shot him 100 times, like, because yeah. the cops is going to say they had a reason to do it. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know, man. I just feel like it's a loudspeaker speaker you can use on on that big dumbass Ford Explorer you got. You can use the loudspeaker you, if the, if he gets away. You know what I mean? Like I like I just, it should have been handled. Like when they look at this, there's gonna be so much procedure that those cops broke. You know what I mean? Because I know that there's ways that they that they use other than deadly force. Deadly force is a last resort. Yeah, so I just feel like it could have been handled better on all sides, and is all uh, rest in peace to the to the brother who lost his life, and I hope the officer who got shot is alright. 
I and, just and don't like the thing, fact that everybody got to get a lick in, though. It's like when you jump in, you, you ever participate in jumping somebody and you just got to get a lick in? I don't like how everybody feel like they got to get their lick in. It's 96 shots. Of, oh, oh, let me get around this car right. so I can hit them twice, man. I don't like that part, man. You got yeah, them down. To three or four shots would have put them down on the ground. Right. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm with you, E. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that either. But one of the things that I didn't understand, and I like, I don't know how the law works, and I don't, I don't know how you know it works. But like, you know, everybody that shoots the gun, it doesn't matter if you train to shoot or not. Like, yo, they were shooting from super far, so like, I don't, I don't think every every bullet hit. The nah, nah, bro. No, that, uh, that first, that first, that first body cam. Them, every one of them hit home. Like them was on the money. He was sending no. them. Like, I think it was like the second cam we we saw. Like, I don't know if it was a he or she, but she was far. But that, you know, then you hit you hit people in in buildings because they was around an area where. You know, anybody could have got hit. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be mindful. So if anything, they should get some type of, uh, 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 like, I don't know, some type of fine or something. Like, they should be penalized for, like, shooting that far and not that close up because it's like they was in an area where anybody could have got hit. If you look at the camera, like, they was, like, like feet away, like, a, a lot. And, I mean... Right. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just, it's just crazy, man. And, and it, like I said, <laughs> like I said last week, man, like, yo, man, when the cops come, man, just, yo, so you can go home, please. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want no problems with you. Like you don't have to Comply. know everything. You don't have to know everything. Just here. Yeah, okay. All right. But well, I know my rights. I know my rights. I don't have to give you my driving license. Listen, here goes my driving license. Do you want anything else? Like, yeah, just, just comply. What they want. Just comply. Yeah. 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 It's tough. I mean, but like, kind of like what you were saying, uh, Rob, is, is some of that could have been done differently. I think a lot of times that, like, you know, that Monday quarterback. That's in us, uh, you know, it, it kind of like look at it from the standpoint because like I, you say, like the loudspeaker stuff, it's just like if they don't, you know, stop the threat right away, then he, you know, takes off. And now it's, it's a large. Now he's at yeah, large. Yeah. yeah. And it's a high speed chase and somebody else could get hurt and, you That's know, all of that point. type of stuff. And then like. Um, so let's blast him 96 times just to make sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I would say this: if if the if he bust first, yeah, I wouldn't care. You, 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 you get what you get when you bust first, though. Yeah, like you get what you get when you bust first. Because here's the thing: we we know what the police are gonna do, right, wrong, or indifferent. We know what they're gonna do, right? That, we we yeah. know especially with a black man. So we know what they're going to do. We know what they're bringing to the table. It is on you to change the outcome of that, bro. Like, that's one of the first lessons I learned from my pops. When you get pulled over, turn on your interior lights, right? Yeah. Keep your hand on the steering wheel. Don't make any sudden movements, right? Do you think my homeboy, Chris, who's white, do you think he got that same talk? No, because they ha police handle us differently. Like, so as a black man, you already know, like, hey, listen, I can't be, like, I just got to comply. You know what I mean? So I get hit up 96 times, man. That's a, like. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, a lot. And, 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 and that's, you know, I think, you know, all brothers, man, like, that's one of the, one that's one of our, you know, one talks that we'll have with Pops and it. <laughs> It, it kind of goes back to like our, you know, our trauma when it comes to when it comes to cops and the, you know, the response. It's, it's almost like the responsibility is on us to make them feel comfortable. Right. And it's just like that's not always fair. 
because it is not you you know because I can't help how I look and, and and things like that. Like yes, I can comply and things like that. But we have seen you know brothers that have complied in the past and 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 you know got shot up. So it, it's it's. <clears throat> It's one of them things, bro. It's, it's, it's one of them things. And let's just... Hopefully he didn't, you know, bust first. I hope not, man. I hope not. Yeah. Um, Prayers out to everyone involved, man. Yeah, That's a tough thing for the cops to have to go through, too, because now they're going to be more apt to shoot the next black dude. You know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah, I, I would I would like to think that no um you know no cop is 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 well I can't say that never mind because yeah, I, I thank you thank you my brother thank yeah, you thank I, you my brother because I can't even <laughs> it's a story that I haven't even covered yet that's like it 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 it'll make you almost um you know make have a high speed chase. And, and never yeah. want to get pulled over because, like, yeah, we, we're right. There are, <laughs> there are certain cops out there that that want to do. And, but that's the thing. There's certain people in general that want to do evil. In general, that want to do evil. So, yeah. Uh, yo, go ahead, Sean. Yo, yo, yo. Um, I, I do want to say something. Um, I know we kind of. It, we're off of that topic, but I just wanted to say something um, in reference to the the guns in church. Yeah. Um. So, uh, it's 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 really a tough thing. Um. It's really a tough situation. Um. Because I I do believe that um church is a place of worship. It's a it's a place that. Um, you should feel safe. Um, so I, I do believe that um, dependent on the leadership, um, I, I, I cannot sit here and say that the Lord would not tell a pastor to have certain security secretly armed. I, I, can't, I can't say that that's not going on in churches. Um, but I, I will say this, I will say that, um, it has to be a, hmm, it has to be a word from the Lord to tell you to do that because you don't want to be in church fearful looking behind because you'll never get what it is that you come to church for, because that is the plan of the, of, of the enemy to have people fearful to not even go to church. That's the original plan. So, I mean, I, I think that when you when you talk about guns in church, um, are they needed truly? I, I don't think they truly need it, but I do believe that there is some churches that might carry. Um, and I and I can't not I cannot not say that the Lord did not tell them do it. So I, I just wanted to like kind of say that because um that's a that's a sensitive su subject i mean when it comes to because you shouldn't be doing it because of fear like you you shouldn't do it because of fear you shouldn't have the the four or five on you preaching because of fear you should only be do you should only do it because like the lord told you like it's it's okay to do this and the lord deals with everybody different so he might tell me to do it and tell you, Lenny, not to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted kind of to, to speak on that real quick. Um, I know we pass it, but that that is a real, real, um, yeah, that's a real thing. Yeah, um, yeah, like anything that we we cover is 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 um is fair game through the whole thing. Um, I hear you, bro. Um, I don't, I don't do anything out of, um, fearfulness. I do things out of being prepared and, Cautious. and, and, um, I, I, I definitely hear you when you, um, when, 
when you say like that's something that has to be um that has to be something that is brought down from you know from God and that hey we all have our own um walks and prayer points and 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 um things like that but it's it's not necessarily a but when it comes to protecting uh when, yeah, one hundred percent. When it comes to protecting my family, I would do anything. And and if if someone is, I I, I it man, it, this is probably where I need to grow. I, it would be hard for me to um um follow someone that is is telling me that I I can't be prepared to protect my family and mine because you know. Things happen, and 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 life happens, and, you know, for a reason, and um, you know, attacks and 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 things like that come from the enemy. I, I get that. And also, to Lenny's point, I'm with you, Lenny. Carrying a pistol ain't a bad thing. It ain't like um, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a terrible thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, right. it may sound we make we make it sound crazy because it's a gun, of course, but it's not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I'm breaking no rules by bringing this joke wherever I go. You know what I'm saying? It's just for yeah. precautionary means. I don't have a I don't have a gun to shoot anybody. I have a gun so I don't get shot. You know what I mean? Well, there we go. I ain't yeah, hit her. I'm just trying I'm, to make it home. I'm I'm all for um carrying. You know, I'm, 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 I'm all for carrying, but I, I, I like, I think the point is this, and, and I know this might go over people's head, but yeah. like the Holy Spirit is stronger than a gun. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, yes. um, like, I believe that if the Lord is really, um, how can I say this? If I, I believe that the Lord can truly um, alert you and let you know that this this guy is going to come in here and do something, and He will allow you and give you wisdom to de-arm or disarm the situation. Um, I do believe. I know it sounds like a fairy tale, but I do believe that that happens. But I do believe also. Like my man E said, uh, it's not a bad thing. And if you look at certain clips, I think in Texas, uh, probably four, six years ago, um, this guy came in a church, shot one person, and then the usher shot him. So the usher, you know, was able to, um, you know, like not save that person that got shot, but he was able to save a lot more people by carrying that firearm so i think it's one of those things where if the lord say do it and i'm i'm talking from the perspective of like the pastor in the church you know like the the pastor running the church and having certain members in certain places with firearms if you look at td jakes and all of these big preachers there's no way on earth that their security don't have firearms correct so it's, it's not that it's not in church right now it's just the smaller churches that these people are targeting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, two weeks ago, they, you know, went to uh, Joel Olstein Church, um, some lady, you know. So, I mean, it, it's really it's really one of those things where you have to pray about and you can't just move off of your emotions, your logic. Um, but I'm all for carrying. I believe that you should carry. Matter of fact, I believe that we should be um, stocking up on ammo now because I do believe something is coming to our nation. So we should be stocking up on ammo. We should have shotguns. We should have these things. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of sending my girls to a school to teach them how to shoot. You know what I'm saying? Because if they ever try to take the, the head out, you know, they can still defend themselves. But some people won't, you know, 
they they not for that, but I am all for that just being prepared and 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 training your kids and your family to protect the house. So that's that's what I got. Shouts out to Academy. They got a uh, hundred round forty uh, twenty bucks right now. Yeah, I, I I'm just I'm I. I I'm just speaking on it from the standpoint, and I know that I have to grow. I, I and, and, and um, you know, in my walk, but I, I, it would. I don't want the, you know, just the preacher to be um, protected, you know, and and their response is is towards the 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 head of you know, the, the house, uh, the church. Um, I, I feel like wherever I do land and, and law is, is there for me to, uh, protect myself and my family. That that's exactly what I'm going to do wherever I'm at. And it would, it would be hard for me to be somewhere that I don't feel protected if I can't protect myself because, just like just like those those churches and things like that that get shot up like yeah and we and we've seen it through uh different security details and things like that they they have a a structure on who they're protecting and and I'm not going to be number 3 number 5 on anybody's list you mm-hmm. know and and I just feel like if 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 the law in the state requires that you know it, it allow allows that then then that's what I'm gonna do where wherever I'm at because um it, it's it, and it goes back to like I, I'm I'm not being a, a fearful a man like yeah I want to you know go into this place of worship and and um you know, and praise and, and, and do all it and, and, and do what we came to do in that, in that church. But it, it, it comes, it comes a point to where like certain things don't make sense to me at this, at, at this point in my life. What's up, Kathy? Kathy. But yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I I hear you, Sean. Like, uh, so so my my, it's tough, man. Like this is this is sensitive. This is tough, and it, can y'all hear me? Yeah, I we can hear you. You you can go, if you want to right now, or you can wait. Kathy, you want to go right now? Yes, I wanted to speak on it if possible. Yep, go ahead. So I wanted to speak on it um, because I think I think that this conversation is one of those things that um, you don't really think that you need to think about or talk about, but then certain situations play out that make you feel like, okay, well, what are what are my options? Like, what am I going to do if someone comes into a church? Um, just like it happened in Charles, you know, in South Carolina, where he came into a prayer meeting or something like that, right? And so it's not like these things are so out of the world. They they very much can happen, right? But here's the thing: the fact, the truth of the matter is that that fear is a spirit, just like Minister Sean said. Sean said, right? Fear is a spirit, and it's a spirit that the enemy has um, used since the book of Genesis, right? Right. Uh, right? And so we know that. I think that it would behoove anybody, like, if you're going to make any decision based on fear, then you're already, your motive for that decision is already skewed, right? The, right. the reason why you would want to make that decision should not be led by, by the spirit of fear. And that's why when Sean began right. to say everything should be taken to a little prayer, we're not just saying to stop there because prayer may mean prayer in action, right? I think that when people say, I'm just going to pray about it, okay, that's good, but then what, right? 
um, you have to make sure that after you have prayed and you get up out of that place of prayer, that you have heard what to do. And if you haven't heard what to do, then you go back to the last thing that you heard to do. And so I, I don't believe that God is unjust. And I do believe that God is very much aware of all the lunatics that we got in our midst. There's a bunch of crazy people operating as demons on a regular day. You can't go to the grocery store without feeling like, where's the exit? Where's the exit in case a lunatic comes in here while I'm in the grocery store, right? Those things are very much real. But when we go to places, even when we go to places that are supposed to be places of safety, in refuge like the church are we taking that day to prayer are we committing our day to the lord in prayer are we even starting our day by saying god i don't know what's going to come before me today but i commit this day to you i commit that whatever you will whatever whatever would be out there would not attach itself to me or my family do we even take it to the lord before you even step and begin to look through your phone and go on social media and, and call people back do you start off your day just committing your day to the Lord in prayer? Because you, we don't know. You don't know. You could be in church thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm safe in church. And some crazy person come in there, right? So uh, the arrogance, arrogance is the spirit, right? It's the spirit now of the Lord. But arrogance tells you that you have time to do something tomorrow that you should have done today. Arrogant people say on a regular day, I have time. I have time to to give myself to the Lord. I'm not in that place yet. I'm not mature enough yet. I don't have to consider this yet because I'm not there yet. And so God understands my heart. You're right. He does understand your heart. That's the problem. He does understand your heart. And so anytime that he gives you situations where you have to consider things like, am I going to get my deep to hold a gun for me? You better have taken that thing to prayer because everything that you do will get, you will have to give an account for it. It says, we will have to give an account for everything that you do. And God don't care if you say, well, God, there was, there was a bunch of lunatics just shooting people up at churches and I wanted to protect myself. He said, okay, that's good. Now, did you give it, now, did you bring it back to me though? So that I can give you counsel. But are you breaking any rules? Are you sinning by bringing a pistol to church? Are you sinning? Are you breaking any rules? Anything that's that you do, anything that you do, anything that you do by your own will, by your own might is actually an offense to God. Because what you're saying is that you need God to protect you. What you're saying so is you I can, got so, this, I can take care of I mean, myself. And so what's going to happen is God is going to give you a chance to prove yourself. He said, oh, okay, hey, there goes that word, Lenny. You, you want to impress me? Okay, you want to prove that you can handle a situation like this? Then I'm going to let you do it. But it's not even about trying to prove, prove or trying to, it's, it's but, not, but, but it's I'm not telling a you how God, I'm telling you how sometimes God operates. So if you're saying it's not a sin, we're not saying that it's a sin. Listen to me. No, I'm I understand that, but it's like, it's like, like no, I understand all of that, but it's like, I'll be saying it like, like it's not, I'm just not, and it's not always necessarily fear. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe on some points it's fear, but so then what's driving people you? carry their pistol what to the, drive you to do it? people what's carry their pistol you? to the grocery store or to go pick their daughter up from school. It's, it's not necessarily fear, it's just, to do it? man, it's, what <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time explaining it, bro, but it's like, I, I don't see the, I don't see the, I don't see the wrong in it or how you can be condemned if it's not breaking any rules. I did not. No I, one is saying, no one is saying that rules. it's wrong. No one is saying it's wrong. No one is saying it's wrong. My my household is a household that we carry. We have weapons in my house. We're not, I'm not saying that it's wrong. What I'm saying is what is driving you to make that decision? If you're making that decision based on your own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says lean not to your own understanding. That's what the word says. So I'm not saying that it's a sin, and I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm saying your decision to do it outside of God is a, is wrong. Outside of God, it is wrong. My yeah, job I, as a husband and as the leader of my family is to provide and to protect for my family, to protect and provide. And who gave family, you that job? I am here. But who gave protect. you that job? God. Who gave you that job? God did. God I, gave me his job. Too. Okay, so so then how can you take him out when it's time for you to protect your family? How can you take him out of it? How can you how can you decide for yourself without even giving God a chance to let you know how to how to drive, how to begin to lead your family correctly? It's not a sin. I'm not saying that it yeah. is a sin. I think I think we I think we lose him. I, I don't know, man. I just think we swerving, man. It's 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 no. not that deep. It's my job to protect this woman and these children. And if it's a maniac running around shooting churches up, it's my job to protect this woman and these children. 
I am here and to do God, that. If I have if to turn God my gun and sit in the front them in that way. And if God leads you to protect them in that way, then that's not a problem. But if you're doing it based on your own thinking, you're leaning on your own understanding, then it is a problem is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. And, and I hear that it could sound like um, it, could, it could be it could be fear. Um, I just look at I think I think a, I, I think at the basis, you know, um, the man is going to think like, OK, at the end of the day, I'm the one that has to protect. Now, what Sean it, Sean put out is just like, hey, you got to take that to God, which we understand. And, and like I said, that is that's where I need to grow, because I'm in the mindset of. If I'm going in a place like the, I, this is just this is just me feeling this way, and it's just like, yeah, the the church is, this church is not necessarily a safe place because we've seen what happens in churches. Like, so it can it can have all of those things that 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 we we think of a church, but it's not necessarily a safe place that nothing happens in and i and i understand that you know we have to take everything that we do to the lord and and, and i'm getting there I, it's just it's just hard for me right now to to feel like and, and i know that this is this is all me right now i get it Sean. i get it kathy it's just hard for me to to for my leader to say like hey no this is not a place where we bring guns in now that could mean that one of us, just because I want to protect my family, somebody else want to do the same thing and have a mental breakdown in church, and then they bust up everything. I, I get, I can get where all of that. It, but, can, but, but but don't you also think that if the Lord is present, people only gather for two reasons: you're either gathering in the in the spirit of the Lord, or you're gathering in flesh. If, if, if you're going to a church where the spirit of the Lord is, because there are some churches where the devil has his throne. I'm not speaking about those institutions, okay? Because remember, you are the church. So the building itself is it's, it's just a place where people are gathering in fellowship. But wherever the spirit of the Lord is, you think that God will then cause chaos and confusion in the midst? If he dwells there, if he dwells richly there. Now, if you're going to a church where you're like, I don't know if anything can pop off, it, it, that, then that means that you shouldn't even be at that church. You're, God should have led you out of that church and you should have taken your family out of that church a long time ago. What, what? I think that's great. I, I think that you can't say that either, that the shootings only happen in churches where the spirit is not present. Uh, is that what you're saying? Um, I mean, uh, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. That's because crazy the, to the say. Spirit of the, Lord, the spirit of the Lord is not confusion. God does not bring about confusion. That's not what That's crazy to say, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna have to I, disagree with that. Yeah, man. I think I think God. Yeah, I I I feel where you're coming from a little bit, Kathy. I feel like God is not gonna uh, like if God God in this you know in that would spirit. take his testimony. That would take God's testimony. There are a lot of churches. There are a lot of church leaders that are not supposed to be leaders. They're leading people astray, and so God is not in their midst. I, I mean, no, that's I absolutely of, true. But you can't say that only leaders, the shootings happen at the churches. Where the Lord is but what present. I'm saying is there are, there are churches and there are bodies of believers that are gathering that God has not called them to gather. And so if you're in that place, yeah. okay, you're sitting in that pew and you start feeling unsettled, what do you think you should do at that moment? Get up and leave. The Spirit of the Lord is not here. Because the Spirit of the Lord will bring me peace while I'm trying to worship Him. The church is supposed to be a place where you worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if I can't worship you in spirit and in truth because I'm scared, then that means that there's a, there's another spirit there that's not of God. Why would I say that? So I don't think it has anything to do to do about being scared though. I think it's just about like if this is law and and I and I'm able to be prepared to protect then watch wherever church I'm at. From home. Then watch church from home. Watch then, church from your YouTube, from your 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 device. Don't yeah. come to church. Then. Yeah, but that but that's kind of like what where I feel right now is if if someone is saying that you when we have when we obviously have intelligence that churches are under attack and 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 we're 
I don't know. I, I just, I just. Who I, go under attack? I'm a school. I, I work in a school all day, every day. One hundred percent. So you know what I do before I go into that school building? I armor myself, Lord. I don't care what happens in here. You said that I'm a child of yours, so you won't protect me. I, I work in D.C. where there's homeless people walk up to the school while we're at the playground with the kids at recess time. I, but I don't live in fear. Because I, I, whatever whatever comes, God has equipped me more than equipped me to be able to handle it, or He'll shield me from it. And if it's if it's my time to go, if it's if it's if it's destined for me to go, that's the way I'm supposed to go. Then hey, that's the way I'm supposed to go. It's God's will. But what I won't do is 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 begin to bring an energy to a place where I'm supposed to worship and and be only about worshiping God in that place. That's the only thing I'm supposed to do. I shouldn't even be considering other things. And if things if things pop off and God allows it, then that's God's will. You couldn't have stopped it if you wanted to. You could not have stopped it. You can, you're not stronger than God. You're not mightier than God. God knows. He knows that he's numbering our days. He's the one that has that plan. Ultimately, is he has it. So why would I then do all these other things by my own strength and by my own might? If I'm not your will, God, is your will. I'm not stronger than God, but I'm I, I am stronger than if somebody just come up to me with some like so if if we just in some hand to hand combat like and I, I just I just can't really like I hear you I hear what y'all two are saying and and like I said y'all y'all are further than where I am but like if if someone if if we if if the attack is there and it's um whether it's hand to hand combat or a knife and I'm able to, you know, uh, protect myself that way. Yes. I can, I can, I can give that, that thanks to, to God for giving me the strength and, and it wasn't in his will for me to go out like that. I, I, I get that. But on the other hand, it's just like, so I can protect myself that way, but I couldn't protect myself if someone had a gun. I, but no one's saying that you can't. We're saying that before you make that decision, take it to the Lord. Because if, if that's what God is giving you as a solution, then he's going to honor your solution. And guess what? You're going to have grace for it. What you don't want to do is make that decision and not have grace for that decision. Because whether you have that gun in your pocket or not, that's, you die. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm standing on business. I, that that's why it's hard for me. Like I, I feel y'all, and I want I want to uh, I, I I want to be there. Um, it's 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 hard. It's it's hard for me to to pray, and what whether you know whether I get that. If, if God says that I I can I can carry everywhere, you know, except church or. You know, he he says that I can carry, and and the church leader is saying that no, we have the ushers that carry. You can't personally carry. I I don't I don't know that usher. You know, I don't know what he's been trained. I don't know what he did the night before, if he had you know rest and, and things like that. I don't I, I don't know his training. I I I, I believe in what I I know. How I've been trained, what I can do. I, I'm not. That's the. That's the same as like leaving my life in in, a, in another man's hand. Somebody come up to me. Oh, now nah, you fight him for me, please. Th th that's just how I feel about the situation. It's just like if I can, if I can protect myself, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And it's just hard for me to. But it, then that's it, a problem. It, it is. But that's a problem because 100%. you you should be able to put your hand in God's hands anyway. You should be able to trust God with any decision that he's giving you as the overseer and as the priest and the king of your household. Anything that you take to the Lord in prayer, God should be able to respond to it. And you should be good. You should feel good about whatever God decides. And so that is a place that you need to grow. That is. That is because what you're saying is I don't trust God with myself and I definitely don't trust him with my family. So you're, you're so we're working twice as hard. That's not what I'm saying, though. It's a you, difference. You that's not what I'm saying. I don't trust these lunatics that's running in churches, but, but, shooting churches up. It's not that. But what I'm saying, see, we're going way too far over the edge. It's not that I don't trust God with my family and my kids. I don't trust the people in this world with my family and my kids. You understand what I'm saying? That's like you saying, 
I'm not trying to be funny, but that's just like, <clears throat> man, it's, it's hard for me to kind of explain because I don't want to get too far into it. But no, it's not that I don't, I do trust God, but I have to do things as well to ensure <laughs> it comes with work. Everything has to, there is no such thing as prayer without work, like you said. So yes, yes I can trust God and I can listen. Do, I, can listen. I can work. pray, I can pray for a million dollars, but if I don't get up and do the work to get the money, I'm not going to ever get it. So yes, I can pray and put everything in the Lord's hands, but I'm also going to have whatever I need to do to protect my children and my wife. That's not saying that I don't trust the Lord. It's just saying that I, I, I'm here as well. I have to put in the work. I have to work. I have to do the things. I have to protect my family. If a lunatic comes into a church to shoot it up. I, I, um, That's awesome. I want, I want to see you at church every Sunday. With your, with your gun at church every Sunday. Go to church every Sunday. Okay? And I want to see you there. Be ready to protect your family. But you gotta get you going. This. You get, crossing the street now. Hey, you, now you crossing the street. I, I I will I will say this. Um, I think that um, it it is definitely a process, and I I, I want you know I just so take you, my hands off my hat off to you. Um, L. I think that it's a process, and I and I take my hat off to you, L, because. You said, like, I'm not there yet. So, you know, as as you grow, you know, you'll get there. And anyone else that's listening, like, you get there. Because at the end of the day, when you get on that plane, you don't know if that's uh, uh, the dude on Denzel Washington. <laughs> the, the dude that played Denzel Washington, he had, a, he, he had some liquor in his system. You know what I'm saying? You trust that he's going to get you to your destination safe because you can't ride that plane you know what i'm saying so there's there's a trust that you have to put in um the the lord um when it comes to um everything you know and and you not being there that's that's fine you know you just gotta continue to strive to be there and it's it's hard to understand at first you know but i i, I totally understand what Kathy's saying, um, and and I understand that it's not easy because you you you, you got what you have and you you want to protect, but at the end of the day, there's so many people that had it and still died. So it's it's not even a guarantee that you will succeed in that. But I guess just having it will make you feel more comfortable. And, and I totally get that. But, you know, this is one of those discussions that we can talk for literally 24 hours about, and it can go so many different ways. But at the end of the day, it's like you just, not you, but just in general, we should not be operating in fear if we are children of the Lord. So we let me, shouldn't. Well, let me, ask you, let me ask you a question, Sean. Why don't you and Kathy take all the guns that you have in your house and throw them in the trash? If the Lord tells me do that, I will. But this is you don't need to protect that house because you are covered by the. You don't need to protect your house. The Lord got you covered. You don't need guns in the house. Right, right. You're absolutely right. I don't. I don't need guns in the house. You're absolutely right. But in in the case that I. No, I'm just saying, that's exactly what you're saying. If he allowed it, that means that he's giving us grace for it. We're not saying it's wrong right. to have it. What I'm saying is it's wrong to do it by your own will without asking the Lord for it. That's what we're saying. We're not saying it's wrong to have it. We're not saying that God won't allow you to use it. We're not saying that you'll go to hell for using it. We're not saying that you're, you're sinning because of using it. What we're saying is if you do it outside of his will, that is a problem. That's what we're saying. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying, E. Like... I'm not saying that it's bad to have. I believe that we should carry. I, I, I'm for that um, amendment. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is the why. It's always about the why. You know, why you're doing it. You know what I'm saying? I don't carry every day. There have been times where the Lord said, hey, carry. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't want to kill nobody today. <laughs> like, like, literally, like, that's ha that has happened. And I never had to use it, but 
But I, I have heard the Lord say carry today. And I'm like, but oh, the reasoning is all the same. And I'm not trying to be combative, but the reasoning is all the same. The reason that we have guns in our houses is because of fear. The fear that someone's going to break in here and harm our family. Am I right or am I wrong? It's not because of fear. It, 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 it is because that you want to be able to protect the family. Whoa, if you said it for me. Something. I got it out you. That's the same reason yeah, why we want to take that piss through the church. I got protect you. Protect you. What, what, what got you. Got also, <laughs> hey, you guys, but also, you guys said that the church leader said that you can't breathe in. If the church leader does not go with the views that God has given you for your family, then you should ask the, is the Lord if that's keeping your leader. Like, is he my leader, Lord? Because he doesn't, his views don't really align with the ways that you're telling me right now to lead my family. And so the, if the church leader is saying, no, you can't bring a gun in here, but God has told you, yes, wherever you go, carry on. Because people are crazy out here, then you need to ask yourself, well, is this the, is this the church I'm supposed to be attending? Because that doesn't match with what you told me, God, when I took it to you in prayer. Right. And and if if God speaks to that leader and, and says that, you know, that that leader hears from God that he can't that there will be no individuals that have, you know, that carries. Like who are who am I to say that God didn't tell you that? You know, God didn't tell you that, leader. Like you, you want something? Like you just making that up? And then it just turns. It then it just kind of goes back to my my limited. You know, uh, where I where I'm at right now to where it's just like I couldn't rock with that leader if if that's what it is. But at the same time. That word came from God. So, who am I? Like I, like I, I, I hear what you're saying, Sean, and it's just like we, we are, we're supposed to, we're supposed to, um, as men. At the end of the day, it kind of goes back to that that submission. Like, are you, as a man, sub, you know, submitting to God? So I, I get where you're coming from as, as the man. Like, hey, like if 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 I'm supposed to be here, and where I'm supposed to be does not allow that because it was sent from God. But remember, you don't ever have to argue your case as yeah. far as like, if you feel in your hearts of heart that the Lord is telling me this, and I go to my leader and I'm like, listen, I heard on Sunday service, you said that we're not allowed to bring any arms in here, but I know I heard this from the Lord and he rebukes you or he says, no, you can't do that. Then you can politely say, okay, well then I guess right now, this is not the place where I need to be serving. This is not the place where I need to be worshiping because it's not aligning to what God has told you for your family. So you never have to argue what God has said because if somebody tells me God has told me that, that settles it for me. Oh, God told you? That settles it. I don't even have to go back and forth with you because I have to believe that you're hearing from God and that's what he says, then that's God. If this is this is a mandate he has given your family, then what? How, how can I say, no, God didn't tell you that? Who am I to tell somebody, oh yeah, God didn't tell you that? Right, yeah. <laughs> yo, Liddy, yo, you funny, son. I like how you did the cross with the pictures. <laughs> you know what? I, honestly, honestly, I didn't. Honestly, I wasn't even trying to do that. That's that's funny that you caught that. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Hey, maybe. maybe <laughs> no, nah, let me not say that. Shout out to say it, say it, say it. I, maybe God is, um, you know chastising me for for my viewpoint right now come on that's it right there that might be i, I will i will say this and i and i and i and like i don't want to like <sighs> this is this is a, a topic right here i'm not going to lie to you but i will say this i have been in churches where drug dealers came in and they were strapped period i know i know they was carrying you know what i'm saying and um they continue to carry 
until the Lord actually touched their heart and they started leaving it in the car. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I understand what you're saying and I understand it's a growing process, you know. Um, but my thing is always like, you know, if you're keeping one in the head and if God just so happened to lay you out and that gun falls out of your wake side and it shoots someone, now you are locked up for manslaughter. You know what I'm saying? So there's so many different ways that it can like kind of go bad with you having that. But once again, I understand that everybody's mindset is different. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have been in church where someone came in with a firearm because they had the same viewpoint as my man Boogie. You know what I'm saying? Which that's okay. That's okay. You know, but I do understand that it's a process and you can't understand everything right there on the spot. Um, but it's all about trust and why you do what you do. You can protect your family and not be in fear. You know what I'm saying? Not do it because of fear. You know what I'm saying? You got to always ask, your, ask yourself that question. Like, why, why am I doing this? Why are you carrying your gun? Why are you doing, why are you carrying a knife? Why are you doing this? Yes, it's to protect, but are you fearful that you're gonna get killed like this? Or, you know what I'm saying, versus just doing it. Let me let me ask you something, Sean and Kathy. Um, you you know, um, I think y'all both was, was on um, the, the baptism, um, teaching that apostle had right yes i came yep. with, but yes i was on okay but do you remember when she was speaking on the terms of like always being um able to get baptized and and always having to kind of bury yourself right yes. yes do you feel like there is a time that we don't operate in things that we say that we shouldn't as in like fear because i can sit here and say that it's it's not um fear right it's just me being prepared um though fear is like one of those things where i think that we like to not say we have um but I think fear is just something that is we may not be fearful that we're going to get in a car crash, but I could be fearful of a a lizard. Right. And, right. you know, I got to you know, I got to what, um, you know, repent or, or whatever for having having that fear. But at the end of the day, I think it just comes to the the being prepared and just the natural, because we are, at the end of the day, we can be wholly sanctified and all of that good stuff. But you walking around as a, a fleshly person is going to have, and, and, and this, is just, this is just my thoughts, we're, we're going to have some type of fear of something that we always yes. have to kind of take back. So that, yes. that's... We're always, th fear is not absent for believers. It's not like you're going to get to a super believer stage and like i'm on level 12 no longer fearful it's not it's never gonna happen right that's not gonna happen it shouldn't drive you though it shouldn't be the thing that's making you make uh decisions it shouldn't be the thing that is stopping you from doing something that you're, you're meant to do is it, you, you see what i'm saying it shouldn't you shouldn't idolize it it shouldn't be a cloak that you wear as a garment it shouldn't be something that you, you see what i'm saying it's not that you won't it's not that you're going to live life absent of fear is that when you come into a place where you can identify that you know what there might be fear there let me let me let me take this to the lord so that i know that i'm not moving by fear but I'm moving because this is what you're giving me as discernment, or this is what you're telling me to do for my family. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not that you won't ever have it again, or that you won't operate in it. It's that it should not be leading your decisions. It shouldn't be the motivator behind your decisions. It shouldn't be the reason why you stop doing something. It shouldn't be the reason why, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's not that you won't have it. I don't think Every time, and I want, and I want to say that the enemy, the enemy move off of fear. He operate in fear. 
I was looking on social media the other day. I don't know if it was Instagram or Facebook. And it was a guy driving over a bridge and a boat was under the bridge. And it said a new unlocked fear just entered. Like, <laughs> like now the enemy unlocked a new fear for a lot of people because now they don't want to drive on bridges and they see a boat under it. You know what I'm saying? So now I have to cast down that spirit and say, the devil, you are a liar. I am okay. Like, I, I, I'm not fearful that this bridge is going to crash now. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a, it's a pulling down of those um, strongholds that, you know, you have seen um, around and just in your thoughts, you know what I'm saying? So you got to just like, like bring that down. You know what I'm saying? When you, when it pops up, you got to bring it down. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's going to pop up like that. That's, that's the flesh. Like that is living in this body. It's going to pop up. Right. Do, do, uh, Sean and, uh, Kathy, I just wanted to ask you something. Do y'all, do y'all drive like, in DC and like the city that you and Sean, I think you said you was in Carolina. Do y'all like drive like vehicle? You said, do we drive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to work yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And do you wear a seatbelt when you drive? I don't wear a seatbelt. Um, I don't like seatbelts. Okay. Cool. Hey. Not everybody, you know what I'm saying? I was going to say I wear a seatbelt because, not because I'm fearful, but because I'm prepared. You know what I mean? So fear is not driving me, but it has prepared my mind for anything that may take place. You know what I'm saying? So it's not driving my thoughts, but it's making me aware of all the possibilities of things that may happen. You know what I mean? Right. And I want to ask, ask you a question, Dale. Rob, okay. Reebok Rob, but I'm not going to yeah. ask you online. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I do have yeah. a, I have a question for you. I'm going to ask you though, but not online. It's, it's yeah, very sure. personal. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll reach so, out to Lenny so that we can connect because there, there's something you said there, but if you're saying that fear doesn't, dr no. Yeah. Lenny, we, I, just, okay. I have a question. Okay. I'm going to send yep. it to you so you can send yep. it to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Sean. Honestly, I am because, uh, you know, I, I, I needed, I need to hear it just as much as, uh, the next person. Like, I don't, I don't, um, uh, I hope no one thinks that I, I sit up here in a, on a high horse, um, kind of chair and, and think that, um, that I have all answers and things like, like that. I, I like, um, different of, thoughts and things like that so i can kind of take it back and 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 um and pray on it and, and and think about what was said and like i said you you know you you've been following christ longer and 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 your walk is you know um longer and 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 different from mine and it's good to hear it from um you know uh, another another man that that you know, went through things as well and, 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 and is on the way, um, you know, where you're at. Um, so it's, it's, it's good. I, I love it when we can get our, get our thoughts out and, and, and come with it, you know, um, to where it's not, this is a safe place. You know, it may, Maybe it may get heated or whatever the case may be, but I think we all have enough respect here to kind of like understand that it, there's no mal um, feelings or where we're trying to get with it. So I, I'm I'm I love when um, people are able to kind of speak again, uh, speak when when they don't necessarily agree with me, because that lets me know that this is my authentic thoughts on something and. I'm able to see a, a different side, and um, this is something that I, I now I now I see that you know um, a prayer point for me, and and understanding that like okay I, I may think that I'm here 
I, I was there before and, and now I'm maybe here, but it, it, to see, okay, things that I need to, um, to work on and, and understanding that um, everything needs to be brought back to God. And, and through that understanding that there is, there is obedience in in and and what is brought back to you i'm just i'm i was just coming from a standpoint of it's 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 hard for me to understand that right now amen yeah i i um i get it i i totally i totally get it yeah yeah it's 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 a tough one for sure it's it's and and that's what i love about us being open enough to kind of talk to talk about our disagreements because um it 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 kind of lets you know that everyone doesn't have the same um thought process and um yeah it's it's a tough one i i, I like it because it it kind of it gives us something to actually think about it's just like okay well what happened? Because I, like I'm, I'm in the notion right now. Like if if my leader said, "No, you can't bring," I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm looking for a new church or or, or or a new leader or like because I don't. My mindset right now is, what do you mean we're going? You know, we're going against what is, um, lawful and not harming anyone. Like I'm not going out there harming by carrying but in your place of worship you choose not to have that you you may choose to not have you know um weapons at all and so it, it gives me it gives me thought like man if if i'm going somewhere with with someone and they say like nah i, I don't feel comfortable or you you know what i'm saying like yeah. So, so my my question to you, um, Sean, uh, Kathy, is just like, so you're saying that like if if, if, if you know, because you kind of bring everything to God, you know, the the morning of, and 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 uh, Sean, I definitely remember when you was just like, um, I think it was on our Friday calls that that you do, um, you know, the men's Bible study, uh, the man of Ishakar, um, and. Any any men on here should definitely check it out. Um, I th I want to say you do it, Sean. You do it every Friday or every other, but whatever the the case may be, I remember that you were saying that um, that you bring everything to God, even when it comes to like what you wear and things like that on a daily basis. My question to you is if if God put that you know, um, ability in you to be able to protect your household, how you're protecting your household with being able to, you know, uh, be, a, you know, to have weapons and things like that. And, and he gives you, you know, instructions on how to carry when you go to, you know, grocery store, how to carry when you go to these places. And if he says that you can carry, um, in a place of worship and in the, and the leader says that no, God, God said that this to be, um, in, in like wherever, wherever y'all worshiping at, wh what do we do in that, in that instance? Because, I feel like God is God is leading me this way and 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 God and 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 I respect and and um trust this leader. And this leader is telling me something that contradicts what God told me. What do I do? Sean, is he still on? Uh, he probably. I am. I am. I'm okay. still on. Okay. Sean, Sean, you have a testimony that I think 
would really answer this question for Lenny and for other people that may have this question. Um, because remember you shared with me about your anniversary date and the people that you were under before and how they acted about missing church on Sundays. And, uh, you remember that? Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Can you, sh can you share the short version? But I think that that will help answer this question. Yeah, because what, what you said, um, <laughs> what you said, Lady, is like a thing. <laughs> like that, it happens, and not only with a firearm, but it, has, it just happens in ministry, period. So um, basically, um, yeah, the Lord was leading me to, um, the, the Lord was leading me to, well, let me, let me back up. So I believe when you are under leadership and God puts you there, like you got to make sure, like that's the key word, the Lord put you there. So when the Lord puts you somewhere, you know what I'm saying? It's the Lord doing and he'll give you a grace with that. So in, in, this, in this situation with me, me and my wife anniversary, and we wanted to go out of town. And, you know, we, you know, just out of obedience and being um, loyal to my leader, I told him, hey, look, you know, we're going out of town. We won't be able to make it on Sunday. Um, and I'm just letting you know. So he tells me, you can't go. And I'm like, uh, huh? And he's like, you can't go. And I'm like, I can't go because I know that he's a seer. So I wanted to make sure that like, I'm not in danger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause it, it, he, I know that he sees, I know that God allows his eyes to see for me because I'm under him. And I said, if you don't mind me asking like, why? And he said, because I don't want you to go. Well, that's a flesh response, right? No offense to him, but that's a flesh response. Um, and I was like, well, I'm going. Well, I went. So I went according to how I feel and I didn't listen to him. I didn't enjoy myself <laughs> because I was thinking about disobeying him. Even though he was wrong, I still went. So I shared that because I want you to understand that even if the lead is wrong, I believe that you still should obey and let the Lord deal with that leader. Because if he's telling you one thing and he's and this leader is truly hearing from the Lord, he will, the Lord will deal with him. So going back to your question, I believe that the Lord will deal with him and you just be obedient until, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I feel. That's, that's what, that's what the, the Holy Spirit dealt with me in reference to. And, and, and that's just how I would take it. That's how I would answer your question. If that makes sense to you, Lenny. God will honor your, your ability to submit to that. And if the leader is wrong, then the leader will have to answer to putting his whole entire congregation in jeopardy. That's on his hands. Blood will be on his hands. It won't be on your hands though, because you took the proper channel to ensure that you weren't being out of pocket, you weren't being disrespectful, you weren't moving by flesh, right? But right. secondly, if, if, if God has told you to leave that ministry and you're still there and then this situation happens, to affirm why you should leave. And now because some people are loyal to people and not where God is calling them to serve or God is calling them to worship, they're loyal to the individual. And if God has already told you like, hey, you should not be here anymore. I'm moving you to another church or I'm, not, I'm moving you to another leader and you're still there, he will allow things like this to unravel sometimes to see what you're gonna do. And so everything is a case by case situation. And I think that's what like, we know that that can be very hard. That's a spiritual truth that can be hard for people who are still not all the way there. And I think that God knows that as well. You know what I mean? And so you have to understand that like, like, 
God is not going to punish you for carrying your gun. Like, that's not what we're saying. Like, you're not going right. to hell. That's not what we're saying. It's just that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a level of growing in the Lord that he wants us to get to called relationship. And we only get there when we take everything to him for consideration first. And then he gives you grace either to bring a gun or give you grace to either deal with the situation, deal with the situation with the leader, the pastor, or give you grace to be like, you know what, Lord, you've been telling me for months to move my family out of this ministry and I have not done it. And this, this affirms it either which way, guess what? You will still be good because you did as was told to you by the Lord. Right. So let me just say this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is good, lady. Yo, Rob, listen, both of y'all, like, I, I just, I just want to say this. Like, I, I had a problem and, and, and it's so crazy because the Lord was dealing with me, with me in reference to this last year. Like, I have, like, I have seen, like, these people in different countries, like, get their head cut off, like, sort off not not just cut off real quick i'm talking about like taking a time like back and forth and i'm like yeah, why why are they not fighting back <laughs> like this is just it, it it messed me up i'm like why are they not fighting back and the lord told me because i don't want them to now that might have went over your head but the thing about it is like there's certain things that you just truly have to give to the lord and it's not going to make sense because from the outside looking in it's like yo i'm not gonna let nobody just soar off my head like i rather you know like somebody rather shoot me in the back or in the head or something like that you know i'm gonna fight until the death but he gave instructions you know what i'm saying to these people because this is what they living for. This is what they dying for. Muslims, yo, they are strapping themselves to dynamite because they want to see whatever they think they're going to see when they die. You know what I'm saying? So I shared that to say this. It's a trust that you can't even comprehend when it comes, when, when you grow in Christ. And a firearm means nothing if you are in your right place and you understand that yo to die is the game like you know what i'm saying so i just wanted to say that and i know this is like this is like deeper than deep and everybody won't get it but i just want to kind of hit you in the head with that because it's a like i keep saying it's a process and you may not get it now, you may not get it today, but the the way the way you're going, else this time next year, you'll have it. <laughs> you, 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 you'll have it. You know what I'm saying? Um, because you 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 want to know, and you, most people most people that have a problem with addiction. Like they, they say they don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I'm good. I'm good. Can you pass me a fried chicken? You 800 pounds. Yo, you have a problem with something, but the, the key is to confess and say, all right, I have a problem. And that's what you're doing. It's not so much of a problem, but you're saying, yo, I, I don't get it. And I know that I don't get it, but I am willing to hear the perspective of others so maybe I can walk into it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just wanted to say that. I hope it helped a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, one of the things that the Bible talk about, and I don't know if Prophetess Kathy have the exact scripture, and I'm just paraphrasing, but the Bible talks about how the kingdom talk is totally different from the world talk. So the world can't understand. I get my hair cut by, by Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, and I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what they're saying. And that's how it is with kingdom and world. When we talk kingdom, the world can't understand it because they're like, yo, what are they saying? They laughing and everything, but what are they saying? 
And that's how it is when you are in the kingdom. Your language is totally different. I'm finished, Prophet. I'm I'm finished. I'm sorry. I have the scripture. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to start in on verse 3. It says, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Meaning if you don't understand it and, it, and, you, and it's veiled to you, it's, it's... Okay, let me keep going. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, okay? I'm going to skip down to verse 14. It says in verse 14, that start, I started at verse 3, I read 3 and 4, and I'm skipping to 14, so you can get the gist of it. It says, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present him, present us with you to himself. All of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light, nope, that's not the scripture I wanted, y'all. Hold on. That is not what I wanted. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 4. 4. Hold on, you guys. Because it talks about how the spiritual truth cannot be understood without spirit. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, here we go. Um, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 13. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make sense that you would take to the Lord a request like, oh, should I bring my firearm to church? If, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, that makes, it, it sounds stupid that I would say, why would she say take everything to the Lord in prayer? That doesn't even sound right. Like all I'm doing is doing this. Because you, you're, you're discerning something without the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says, this is what we speak. You can't even understand spiritual realities with spirit-taught words if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And so it sounds foolish to you if you don't have it. And that's what Minister Sean was talking about. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. I'm going back on mute. Yeah. I, I mean, you tied it and and that's definitely something that i can um go back to and um and study upon and and um grow for sure uh hold on let me just do that back yeah. you good sean if you if you had something to say Okay. No, I was, I was, um, it, it just, okay. It. Yep. Um, yeah. So I, I just want to, I, I wanted to end it there. I think that's a good place to, um, to kind of end the, the episode. Um, want to thank everyone that was, um, in the, in the bleachers, um, and everyone that was on the sideline and, um, contributed to the to the comments and i appreciate each and every one of you for calling in and and giving your insight it is 100 percent needed and helpful and i appreciate it very much so i, I really do it, it may not seem like it in the time but i i, I love the the when someone has a a, a different you know opinion and, and uh, level of of thought and and wisdom you know when it comes to scripture as well because i think most of us that's um viewing this um wants to get to a certain place um spiritually and it helps when we are bold in our thoughts and are able to to get it off 
And if we're wrong, we're wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And, and that's something that I can take back and grow from. I'm never, I've, 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 I've never been a prideful person to where I'm, I'm gonna die on on my thought process. Um, so if if I if these are just my authentic thoughts and views and 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 how I would take a situation on today, April eleventh. That's that's what it is. That's something that I can go back to and, and pray on and, and grow from. And April 12th, I could be a totally different person. And that's why I love getting my thoughts off. Um, so I appreciate everyone um, f for putting their thoughts out there. And this is something that I can come back from. I definitely I really did. I really did receive something for sure. And it's. Um, it's funny because the um, what I wanted to end with um, was this right here. Let me just uh, pull it up. Thank you, Lenny. It was yeah. nice seeing you again, Rob. Yeah, f for sure. We'll definitely sure. talk. I'm going back into the chat box for this okay. last part. All right. Yes, yes. And um, also, uh, um, else, because I can't put it up there, but if you can just – Put the men of Visicar up there. It's every Friday. Um, okay. It's 4 p.m. East, East Coast time. Um, and I mean, it's just like this. We just break down certain words and we just answer questions and just really talk, you know. So, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Lenny. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, yep. So let me just uh, pull this down. Yeah, man. This was a good episode, bro. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so for sure. I'm a, uh, I'm gonna pull you down and then just uh, do my last words and then. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll All right, out. bro. Love, yep. bro. Yep, love, love. love. Yep. Where we at? Let me just go back here then, since it don't want to come up. Yeah, like um, like Sean said, it it, it really is uh, his his Bible study, man of um, Issachar. It really is kind of like this. Um, we are. I like it because um, I am very fresh very green in 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 um in my walk and i've never felt like it wasn't a safe uh place to kind of get some thoughts off with um with some real men and and real men of um of god and and trying to what i what i like about it um if i can share this uh we can speak in 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 uh vulnerability um ways to where like hey man I'm going through this um I, I want to say the couple times that I've been on there um and now that I know that it's every Friday I I definitely want to make it my mission to to get on there every Friday and actually uh Sean one of I had posted it on Instagram and uh somebody that I met when I went to uh, Columbia, he was definitely like, man, like I missed it. So it's, it's, it's definitely going to grow, bro. And, and I, I definitely can't wait for it to, um, to be what, um, what it's going to be. Um, I, I just see it. And, and I just want to say like with, with that, it's, it's a safe space because it's, it's just us men in there. And, you know, it's, it's things that, um, need to be shared and need to be talked about amongst us men and, and how to submit to God and, and what that looks like and, and, and how do we navigate in our marriages and, and even if you're not married, like what does that look like in order to, to get there and, 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 and things like that. And how do I, um, build spiritually and things like that. And every day and, and every time that I get on here, I, I get something from it. And just the same way that um, Sean's uh, Bible study that he has, men's group. Um, yeah, I'm, 
I'm just so thankful for you guys, like the the, the people that show up. I'm I, I really am thankful. I'm, I really am thankful for um, the openness that we're able to have, and you know, I I'm a reserved person. I don't think I, that I'm a shy person. I'm just reserved, and I am. I am thankful that I am able to get on here and and be be open enough to get some things that that I need off that I need answers. Um, yeah. So let's. Um, I just wanted to highlight this. Um, where we at? First uh, Peter, um, verse fourteen. It says, "As obedient children, do not conform." to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. And man, that's like we're, we're speaking on obedience. And that is kind of what uh, Sean and Kathy, you know, uh, portrayed through this. And it may seem wild at first when we're not, you know, when they're speaking spiritually and, and our ears are not, Therefore, it's, it, it does sound like a different language because what you mean I'm not going to be able to do this if that is the case. Um, and what this verse is saying and, and what they are, I feel like is ultimately saying is walk in obedience. And that's that's what I take from it. Um, much love. I love you guys. I appreciate, I really do appreciate everyone that, um, checks in and um if you if you've been if you've been rocking with the show for a while it's a safe space up here you know you can get your thoughts out you can get you can get real answers um and i just love you guys man i hope you have a a great friday um a great weekend and i will see y'all sunday peace